Uh, I'm very pleased to introduce you Russell Slade, uh, the new Charlton Athletic Manager. We're delighted to have uh, Russell on board. He has a, a, a strong experience in, in League One, a proven track record, um, winning twice uh, League One Manager of the Year. Um, he signed a three-year deal and he's appointed as manager. Um, and we're just very excited to, to start working together and to begin our journey um, to bring Charlton back to the championship. Yeah, um, listen, I'm delighted to be here. It's a fantastic football club with a, a great tradition. Um, it's always had a great tradition for bringing good young players through as well. And I know they've had another successful season at academy level. It's not gone quite so well on the pitch, but we're hopeful that we can move the club forward. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. It's an exciting challenge. It's got great facilities. I feel like I've come to a championship football club. That's what it's always felt like at uh, coming to Charlton when I brought teams here in the past. And I'm looking forward to it and, uh, you know, uh, getting started, getting to know the players very quickly and, um, you know, looking forward to working at the football club. Russell, um, there have been six managers here in a little over two years, a lot of unrest. Did that not put you off? Not, not really, um, because I believe in my own ability for, in the first instance. Um, I've been at uh, Leighton Orient more recently for four and a half years and a couple of seasons at Cardiff, and it was mutual decision for me to, to leave Cardiff City and to come to Charlton. It was my decision, I instigated that. Um, so I thought it was a, an opportunity, a good opportunity um, to come to a club that, yeah, maybe it's lost its way, certainly last season, but um, an opportunity for, for me to get this club back on its feet and going in the right direction. And you've got a, a strong track record, but you've never been promoted as a manager. Is that going to change here? Yeah, well, that's what we'll be looking to achieve, but certainly in this league, I've probably not had the budget that we've been allowed at uh, Charlton. It will be a healthy budget and give us every opportunity to, to bounce back, hopefully this season. As we've said, it's a, it's a little bit of a project and everybody's in no doubt there's an awful lot of work to be done, but um, we're looking forward to that challenge. We'll embrace that challenge and we feel confident that we can move the club forward. In terms of your backroom team, what's going to happen with, with that? Have you already got plans in mind? Yeah, obviously I've, I've only just worked, walked in the building, but we're looking forward to, you know, discussions. We've already had discussions with regards to um, the backroom staff, um, which we need to look at closely. There will be a little bit of movement um, and also uh, players as well. But it's early days at the minute, but we, we're sitting down, we're looking at this, we're looking at what we need to do, putting a nice solid structure in place off the field as well. Yeah. Where would you peg the budget then in contrast to... Most of the clubs in, in League One you describe it as a healthy one. Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I would say it would be um, it would be certainly in that top um, six, and and that will be our minimum requirement, obviously, for the season, having been relegated. So, we would think we'll be having a top six budget for this league, with, quite with, clearly. With, with the stuff that's gone on at Charlton, you can't get away yeah. from the the scenes we saw towards the end of the season. How aware were you of that? You say that you're aware of the job that's ahead of you and I think your appointment's been warm, like, warmly welcomed by Charlton fans. How kind of aware were you of the, the kind of issues that there were before you came in? Yeah, yeah, of course uh, aware. I, I see it on, on, on the TV from, from time to time. So um, I, I just think going forward, this is a new start, new beginning. I think there is a desire to reconnect with the fans and I think that's important because you don't achieve anything unless you know we're together in all this um, and that will clearly take time but you know I think appointing me is is, is something that is different and shows an intent um, in terms of what we're trying to achieve here and uh, and there'll be more things in, in terms of what we're trying to do so there'll be a little shift shall we say in in, in strategy, philosophy going forward. So does that mean with, with yourself, do you now identify the, the, the new head of recruitment's come in, uh, appointed recently, 
does that mean you work with him in terms of identifying targets? There's been one signing made already, but what's going to be the policy moving forward on that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I will have a huge influence over the comings and goings at the football club, but it will be, it will be an open um, kind of discussion as well. That's why we brought Steve in with his experience um, of, of the scouting network that he's going to set up and these contacts that he's got. Um, we will sit down and, and we will talk together to identify those targets. But even, even yesterday, we, we, start, we started very quickly. We got to work on a few targets yesterday and there was a few on there that, you know, um, I said, no, I'm not interested in that particular one. I don't think that will improve us. I don't think I know the league quite well. I don't think that's going to be good. And so we've, we've, we've crossed them off and we'll move on. We've got, we've got our short list. We, we're looking at certain areas of the pitch where we feel we need to improve and maybe where we might need a little bit more experience as well. Do you, um, with all your experience in the game, it has changed a lot, but there are a lot of overseas owners now and stuff like that. How has football management, do you think, changed in your time, you know, managing on that side over the amount of years that you have? No, no, you're right. I, th I, think, I think the game's become more diverse as well in terms of, you know, you, you change your changing room. Um, obviously, your ownerships have, uh, have changed in, in, in this country as well. And you know what? I think it's about adapting, adaptability. Um, and I think all the all the strong managers in this country, the and the successful managers of the past, uh, Alex Ferguson's, um, they've adapted in time. They've seen those changes and they've dealt with those changes. And I like to think that you know to have done the amount of games that I've already done is 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 a prize of kind of adapting over time and, and, and adjusting to the needs of a football club. You've got some players as well that could be coveted, Adam Ola Luckman, Johan Goodmans, and just yeah. a couple that spring to mind straight away. What's the general situation, I mean, either to yourself or, or Katrine really, what's the general feeling? Is there any guarantees about these players as to what will happen? Because they're obviously going to be in demand, aren't they, after relegation? Yeah, look, look we're, no, we're no different to a lot of football clubs. We get into that time of the year where most clubs will be wheeling and dealing um, we will be no different, um, but certainly nobody will be leaving this football club on, on, on the cheap. Nobody's going to nick a player out of Charlton Football Club. This is a business um, that we're running here, and um, you know, if 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 the right offer comes in, then we, we, we it will be considered as it would at any other football club. Katrin, with with the change to being a manager. That's a big change. First English appointment under Roland as well. Mm -hmm. Is that something you? I, I, I thought before that it was seriously thought about. Maybe before you actually brought Jose Riga back. What can you can you explain a bit more what that actually means and the, the sea change and actually having, you know, a, a domestic appointment and also the actual job title change as well. Well, obviously, after last season, we all sat down and, and looked at what went wrong and what how we think we we can improve things for Charlton from making it a better, stronger club. And one of the things that we identified is appointing a manager instead of a head coach. Okay. And, and, and with that, with, with what happened at the end of last season, there were certain people that were obviously very pleased to see Russell come through the door and it's felt to be a step in the right direction. But obviously, the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? And what actually gets delivered moving forward. In terms of building the bridges again with the fans, <coughs> the ones that aren't convinced that remain in the... They don't want the current regime here. What would you say to them in terms of what? You, how can you build the bridges back with some of those people? Well, I just want to stress uh, that uh, we have the best intentions for this club, and and hopefully with Russell in the building, the appointment of a chief scout, and hopefully future announcements on players signings, fans will be seeing that we're investing in a positive future for Charlton. Richard, can I just say we made mistakes last year. We know it. Yeah. We had far too many managers. Carol Freyd stayed too long, which is probably the biggest mistake. When we decided to change Carol, one had a decision at that stage. You go for somebody English, or last or the year before, Jose got us out of trouble, mm. so we went for Jose. It's a calculated risk, mm. almost came off, it didn't come off. When we got relegated, then the big decisions had to be made. What were the mistakes? Are we going to make the same mistakes again, or are we going to change? And I think the key is, Russell is the manager, and that's just not a make-believe title. He is going to be the manager. He's going to be a very influential person at the club. And we also realised, because it happens in the Premiership down to our divisions, is that if you get too many foreign players, they can't always integrate quick enough. 
the times you hear Premiership players, where they say, oh, he'll take a year to get adjusted to this league. Well, it's even more difficult when you go down the league. So we've got to be careful about that mix between English and foreign players, which I think we got wrong last year. Yeah. But I think the most we can do is really learn from that and do something about it. I think, I think the thing that people would say is that <coughs> you look at the people that are um, against it, they're saying that there's been too many mistakes continually made, but do you think the slate should now be right, wiped clean and you should be judged again as... Because last season, Katrina, you said in your programme notes, the time to judge us is now, it's, it's, it's our squad, we built it, and obviously it ended in relegation. So... That's why people perhaps are waiting to see what can be delivered now, and some people yet remain to be convinced. I take on point what Richard's saying there, that you are moving in a different direction, or at least this is the start of moving in a different exactly. direction. The appointment of Russell is the start of a new era, and I cannot change last season. I can only look forward, and let's start today. Um, how important is it that Russell stays here for the long term and there aren't any more changes as a manager, you know, that Russell's here for at least two, three years? Well, I, I, that's again something, uh, it's the first time that we sign a manager on a three-year contract. Um, but will he have that patience if things don't necessarily start that well that you won't look to change things again? Will you have that patience? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the patience. Yeah, look, obviously, we, 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 are trying to, we are trying to build something and you can't always put a time period on that you know we, we might we, we need to start the season running that would be great but there's an awful lot of work to be done I feel you know having even just spent 24 hours at the football club there's a, there's a lot to do but that's what I enjoy doing I enjoy getting stuck into that work um, in, going forward including in your contract that you've got that control you said you had over transfers yeah, well, it's not in, it's not it's not in the contract, but it's it's certainly a verbal agreement that we will discuss everything in terms of the, uh, recruitment going in and out, and certainly in my contract, picking the team, selecting the team, that is in there. Yeah. Uh, can I do, sorry, Richard? I'm just going to say one thing, something because I I read, um, being a local guy, I read the press and what have you, and I, I and also I get. Um, approached and aggressively approached by a number of fans before and after matches. But I think the one thing which is, and this isn't supposed to be an excuse, but I think it's a mitigating factor which nobody has discussed, is I think the bulk of our best players were out for the bulk uh, most of last season. You go through that team. Cashy was always going to be our star midfielder. He played one or two games, I think, last year. Fenty Kelly was our very valuable, highly paid striker. Really didn't play the whole season. Patrick Bauer, the one foreign player who everybody I spoke to said, he looks like an English player, that guy's going to be good. Injured the bulk of the season ever since Brighton. Um, Diara, experienced midfielder, only became fit towards the end of the season. And they are key players. Now, maybe you could say one of the common denominators is they're all foreign, and that could be attacked at us. But it's very unusual to have your four or five best players to be out for the bulk of the season. And... Um, Hopefully we won't have that sort of thing again this year. Can we take Emma next, please? Um, Russell, I just wonder what kind of assurances you needed from the club before you took the role as manager. What conversations you had? Well, obviously, some of those are, are, are quite personal to the conversations that we had, you know. Um, but I have to be honest, um, you have to take people as you find them. And I thought that it was a very open, very honest um, conversations. There was two meetings, and I was very, as very pleased with what I heard. Um, there was, um, I think, there was a willingness to to put things right, a willingness to to move the club forward, and I was quite excited by that. It was, it, it felt like a project, something that I wanted to get stuck into, something that you know I'm familiar with. Um, and I was I was very pleased with the, the the honesty, the fact you know it's a big thing to say you've made mistakes. Nobody likes to say they've made mistakes. It's not easy. Uh, it's not easy for for my son, you know, who's a teenager, to say I made a mistake, Dad. But people do make mistakes, and and the important thing is we learn from those mistakes going forward. And and I think there is a real intent to learn from those mistakes and. You know, they've done. They've made a start by appointing a British manager, which has not happened for a good number of years. Somebody that knows the the league, knows the way around, knows contacts. I think just just to give you a little insight, yesterday, which was, you know, maybe I'll get told off afterwards, but <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, um, just 
we were talking and we were talking about recruiting and, and, and players and I, I just picked up the phone and I said, Okay, I'll give them I give the manager a ring straight away. And and the manager picked up straight away. And then there was two other managers and they I, one left I left a message for one he rang me back 10 minutes later so there was three there was three one premier league manager two championship managers um we're having conversations with straight away i'm not sure that type of thing would have perhaps happened in the past that's what i'm saying and um that that's something i can bring to the table you know that, that communication the fact that i do know a lot of people um you know players and, and managers and that maybe can help and we can get you know some dialogue going and that will you know help the club going forward do you hope that you can also build bridges between the fans the board and the owner because there are lots of fans who have already lost patience with Roland de Chatelet and don't want him to be part of this club anymore yeah look all th these things take time don't they and and it's it's not going to happen overnight but and <coughs> you know it, it's it's just it's the little things I always think in life, the little choices that you make. And we've got to make good choices, even when they're small choices now. We have to make good choices to show the fans that, you know, we are reconnecting. We, you know, there is a trust going forward. Um, I, 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 will, I will talk to the fans and, and like I would talk to my players. I like, I like the, a, a real trust between myself and the players and an openness and an honesty. And, and that's what I will always try to portray to the fans and uh, and hopefully that they'll see that go going forward and you know we, we need to get that identity back really as a community club going forward and and, and a togetherness because you know unless you're all together it's very very difficult to achieve your targets we need to all be pulling in the, the same direction and and of course there is opposition to that um, at the minute but hopefully you know I can put that right on the pitch give them something to be proud of players going out playing with pride and a togetherness and a real spirit um, and if we can get that going then hopefully fans will come back on board. Have you had an opportunity to speak to most of your players yet? Have you met the squad? Oh that would be a very expensive phone call. I, I would think they're all over the world on holiday enjoying themselves. Um, no, I, I, have, I have actually spoken um, to a couple of players actually one rang me but um, which, which was great. But look, no, I'll, I'll speak to every single one of them, more likely when they've returned or, or, or nearly returned. That, that's part of managing your football club. I'll have, I'll have time with every single player. We'll sit down and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one and we'll, we'll have a chat going forward. I think that's a really important part of your management and your management skills really important to know what makes them tick, if they've got problems, if they've not got problems, what needs to happen. And I'll talk to all of them and I'll do that at the end of pre-season as well. Uh, you see uh, Tony Watt staying uh, now that you're here, obviously you've been quite, been quite a big fan of his. Well, of course, he, he came to Cardiff and he, he, did, he, he did particularly well. Um, for me, uh, he, I believe he's had an injury, but um, you know he's, he's uh, likely to be back in maybe three or four weeks. So you know he's a Charlton player. So he, 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 as it stands, he'll be back for for um, for pre-season training. Um, well, Katrina, we saw what happened with Chris Wilder. Is Russell the only manager you approached, or were there others in contention that you've spoken to? Uh, no. So since the end of last season, we were in discussion with several candidates, and then. After a while, or it became clear that uh, Russell was going to be the best man for the job. And Russell, have you met the owner? And you, where is he today? No, I've got, yeah, I've met the owner, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was an important part for me. It was to obviously meet the, the the man in charge of the football club. So yeah, that that's that's all happened. Um, today, um, um, I not not today. He's not here. No, he's uh, he's away. He's a very busy man. But um, of course. Um, Hopefully, dialogue is, 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 is very strong between all of us. I think that's really important. Again, part of your management that, uh, you know, even if I've not got anything to talk about on the pitch, is, is, is to keep communication going and, and dialogue between, between all of us because that's, that's, that's part of uh, moving forward and being successful as well. well one of the things Jose Rodriguez said when he left Katrina is that he didn't get the assurances he wanted to carry on in the role. How would you respond to that? Was he someone you were looking to retain despite relegation or not? Because his kind of comments have been construed in multiple ways. Well, I think it's more coming back to the question you asked before, is that we sat down after the end of the season and we thought maybe a new 
approach with an English manager was the best way forward, and that's why at the time we couldn't give them him the assurances that yeah. he, he wanted. If we'd stayed up, it may have been different. I mean, Josie has uh, championship experience, obviously. Mm. He doesn't have Division One experience. No. Yeah. Well, Russell, with the squad size, just quickly, to cut across, yeah. there's no loans next season, is there? It's quite a big squad at the moment with a number of players on it. What do you think is the optimum size that you're going to need for the kind of demands of League One? Yeah, probably around about between 22 and 25. Really, you've got you've got to have. But I think the important thing is now is 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 the role that your younger players have as well. You know, to make up that number 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's something I need to look at as well. Is, is there anybody that's talented coming through that you know is worthy as worthy as one of one of those squad? Numbers one to twenty two, one to twenty five, whatever it turns out to be. And then Jeremy. Uh, Russell, you said a lot about overseas players and managers. Being an English manager, what Englishness are you going to bring? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, a, a multitude of things. We, we'd have to have a, another meeting for that, and it would have to last a lot longer than the twenty twenty five minutes or so that we've got here. But um, you know, I think. We, we've talked in this country. Let's talk about football. We talk. We talk about head coaches and. And it, it, always, it always makes me smile a little bit because so much of the job today, because of the football clubs and, and what's at stake are, and, and their businesses, they're, much, they're more of business than they've ever been, is management of that. Management of that is four-fifths of the job. You know, you speak to likes of Steve Bruce and he, he would sort of agree with that as well. And, you know... You, you, it's so, so important that, that you're managing. It, it's a people's business, football. And, and that's what I'll bring to the football club. You've got to manage. It's important to, to manage upwards. It's, it's important to manage downwards. You know, you, you've, got to, you've got to... Those communication lines are so important that, you know, everybody's on the same page because otherwise there's a problem. And what's going to be your priority for turning around the club and going up? <laughs> results <laughs> no look ultimately ultimately every manager is going to be judged by what happens on on, on the field so what what we do in terms of a re recruiting is vital what, what we do in terms of the players that remain here is important but you know above all is 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 having a group of players that want to be here want to put that red shirt on want to move this club forward and have the desire to get back up to the next level that's what I'll be looking for and and again that's part of being you know, a manager and, and, and looking for those signs early, identifying them and, and ensuring that there's a good, strong group of players that when the going does get tough, they roll the sleeves up a little bit further and we get the result that's necessary. Uh, it's really, um, this new approach, as you say, doesn't work and Russell can't rescue Charlton. Do you think Roland might think again about selling the club? No, as we, as we said in the, in the past, uh, uh, the club is not for, for sale and we had uh, several approaches uh, from alleged buyers uh, before, uh, including the one of Mr. Varney, but somebody, a proposal like that includes a move away uh, from the valley. And uh, Roland du Châtelet is, uh, knows how important it is for fans uh, that the uh, Charlton plays at the valley. So Russell's not a last sort of roll of the dice for you? Uh, no. Last can I, can I ask a question to Katrina Richard? You've had a lot of very personal abuse directed at you particularly as the season came to a close. I just wondered what your thoughts were about that and how you kind of generally feel about things because there's this feeling, I think, from protesters that they're not going to relent until they see a change. And I just wonder what you, what, what, what you both, how you both would respond to, respond to that. Well, for me, the change starts today, you know, and uh, uh, I, I am very positive that we, we made the right appointment and that uh, this can be the, the, the start of of something what the Charlton fans can bring uh, back to the valley, believe in, and, and give them hope again. Richard, anything to add? No, I, I, yeah, I was disappointed with the treatment I got last year, yeah, considering what I tried to do for this club. And um, I think we're in a very difficult position. Do I just resign and stand with the fans in the North Bank, or do I try and influence from within? And I decided the second was the better option even if it does give me some personal grief. Last couple of questions. Uh, Katrina, I see a lot of fans are saying that they're not going to renew their season tickets. What's your message to them? Well, uh, uh, that's their choice, obviously, but uh, I, I say let's, let's all move forward. What happened last season was not ideal. 
but uh, let's uh, take the appointment of Russell as a new start and, and see uh, and see how things go. Did you fear for your own job uh, when jobs got really big? No. Um, just, uh, Russell, in terms of actual transfer activity, how quickly yeah. do things start moving for you, do you think, by both ways, I suppose? Yeah, no, but it, it, it's, it's, as I said, it's wheeling and dealing time, isn't it? And um, that's, that's going to be part and parcel of it during the summer. Um, sooner rather than later, hopefully. It's always nice, isn't it, as a manager to get your group in earlier rather than wait until the last minute. But at times, you, you've got to be patient. It's about getting the right fit, that's the thing. If we have to wait a bit longer for the right fit, we will do. But I've identified a few already okay. that would like to. We're on, we're on it, shall we say, and straight away. And is the assistant manager just going to be announced on the official website, or can you give us an insight now into who it's, who it's going to be? <laughs> I, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. Kevin, then ITV's last question, okay? Yeah, Russell, um, yeah. not so much a question as a recommendation. Yeah. You want to win these fans over? Yeah. Beat Bill Wall twice. <laughs> okay. Beat Bill Wall twice, <laughs> and you're in. Okay. Take it from me. All right. I Thank you. Do that. Oh, I'll have a, yeah, yeah, I'll have a really good go at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Thank you. That you can win from Are you confident for promotion at the end of this season? Well, obviously, uh, as, as Russell said, uh, it should be on our ambition. Uh, it's not as it's easier said than done, but uh, it should be our ambition for next season. Last one, Russell. No, looking forward to it. Look, look, look it's, it's good to meet people. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. Um, I trimmed, dragged me off the beach in Tenerife. <laughs> um, so, so it's been a bit of a whirlwind over the last couple of days. But you know what? I'm really excited about, um, about coming here. Um, it's, a, it's a fresh start. Um, it's a project I really want to get stuck into. Look, and there's no there's no straight roads. It's a it's always a bendy road, isn't it? To to being successful, there, you know, it's overcoming those obstacles as you go along, and um, you know, I'm used to that, and I look forward to that. Look forward to the challenges, embrace the challenges that come along, and 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 pick this club up and and get it back to to where it belongs as as soon as we possibly can. Um, don't ask me the time period because that's that, that, that's that's difficult. But we'll be working on it every day. You know, I'll go home in the car and I'll ask myself, as I will every night, and look in the mirror. Have I moved the football club forward today in any way, shape, or form, whether it's on or off the field? Ultimately, in the football club, it's maximising everything on and off the field. Can you do that? Are, are we there yet? No, no, no. We're probably many, many miles away. But um, that that that's what we have to aim for, that's what we have to try and achieve to maximise this football club on and off the field and if we're doing that like I did at Leighton Orient you know, penalty kick away the O's from the championship you know, the club maximised absolutely maxed out on and off the pitch, that's what I'll try and achieve at Charlton which has huge potential, so much more it's such a big fan base here you know, it, it's such a big club with tradition you know, it, it, it deserves that and, um, you know, we're going to do our very best to achieve that.